This presentation assumes that you already have your BTO login for online surveys and have registered for Heronry's census. So that bit's done. We're looking at exploring your home page that you see when you log into the Heronry census and we're looking at the three elements of entering your data, which are dated observations, the year's best estimates, which are the only essential part of the process, and mapping your colony. There's various ways to log into the Heronry census. You might use the login button here on the uh, BTO web pages. If you're already logged in to another survey, then you can use Survey Home to change between the surveys that you're looking at. You might see a, a login page like this one. And remember that you can tick the box if you want the particular computer that you're working on to remember your BTO password. And then you can log in and see your data home page. And this is prepared specifically for you uh, and your uh, BTO username. And it lists all the colonies to which you are assigned. If you have colonies in more than one region, you can use the region drop-down to select the region that you're interested in. Normally the colonies will be listed in alphabetical order for you, uh, important if you have a lot of them, and you can change the order if you want to using the arrows that are in the uh, header bar of the table. So this list, for example, is sorted by the date of the, the latest submission with the most recent submission at the top of the, of the table. If you're a regional organiser you would see a slightly different, a slightly expanded table uh, and you'd see more buttons with options to review data and to allocate colonies to observers. And the national organiser again has more options and more more buttons, uh, particularly to do with creating and deleting colonies. So whatever your home page looks like, you need to click on a particular heronry in order to activate the buttons below the table. And the important buttons for entering data are this one, enter data, which is to do with our, our uh, dated visit observations, uh, best estimate, which is to do with our uh, year's best estimates, which are the, the essential part. And edit boundary enables us to map exactly where the colony was. And I'm going to press enter data to enter some visit data for this colony. First thing to do is to enter the date of the visit, which was in April. 10th of April, I, I arrived at 9.45 and I spent about an hour. For this colony there's, there's no sub-colony option so I'm sticking with main colony as the, the entry. And I'm just going to, to check that the habitat information is correct. It should be pre-populated with the, the, with the appropriate data. Uh, if not then you can select another uh, set of information and there's some, uh, there's some uh, help here on uh, uh, how to select your habitats. Okay, so I'm ready now to enter some count data and on, on this day, the 10th of April, I counted three apparently occupied grey heron nests. I think there might have been more than that, and so I'm going to en enter an estimate of five. Uh, that could be because I didn't manage to get round the whole colony, or uh, I might have heard some extra birds or something like that. So something led me to believe there might be five, rather than the three that I definitely counted. I'm going to enter a, a count of two for little egret. Uh, cormorants, they were definitely nesting, but I... I wasn't able to make either a count or an estimate for cormorant, so I'm going to tick this box here to show that 
apparently occupied nests were present, but I'll leave the count boxes blank. But there were definitely no night herons, so I'll put a zero in there. And having entered all our data, then we press save, and up comes a confirmation box, which should be an exact copy of the information that we've put in. Uh, it doesn't like our duration. But everything else is, is there. That's fine. I'm just going to confirm that. And uh, yes, the submission has been saved successfully to the database, and we can press close. It takes us back to the data homepage. In this case, I, I do have another visit to enter for, the, for that same site, so I'll do that. I'll do that now. Uh, enter data again. This was a visit in in May. And I arrived at 10.30 and spent an hour and 15 minutes on my account. And the figures I was able to collect were an estimate of six grey herons, uh, a count of three little egrets. Again, I don't know how many cormorants, but there, there were some. And this time I'm going to put zeros in for all of the species that I looked for, but that were definitely not nesting within the colony. And I can save that. And up comes our confirmation box once again. Um, a mirror image of um, the information that we submitted. And I'm going to quickly um, press save again in the confirmation box to send that to the database. Now we're back to the data home page and I've got uh, uh, another visit to enter for that same heronry. So I'll find it again. Here it is. Enter data again. And this is a visit in, in June. I got there at 8.30 and I spent 45 minutes. And it wasn't a particularly good visit. I, I estimated that there were four grey heron nests present. <coughs> I did count four little egrets. Again, I don't know how many cormorants there were, but they were nesting. And this time I'm going to record zero for all of the species that weren't present or nesting. So that's my visit. I'll save that. And here's my confirmation box, which I'll, uh, I'll deal with. It's been saved successfully. And again, we're back to data home. Uh, so that was data entry for um, particular visits. I'll now show you the the year's best estimates, which are the most important bit, really. That's the only essential part of it. You can enter best estimates even if you have no dated visit information to go on. So this time I've selected the colony and pressed best estimate. Um, and we've already got some figures in here that I can adjust. If I, if I click in the box, up comes the um, information that I've collected during my visit so far. And I can put any number that I want in there. It might be higher than any of the counts or estimates. Um, in fact, I'm going to put five in there as my best figure. Uh, little egret, I need to put four because four was the highest count. Cormorant, uh, yes, we know it was present on, on those days. Uh, but we don't have a count, but the AON box is ticked. And uh, Night Heron, Cattle Egret, Spoonbill are all zero, and we have visit data to, to support those in this case. So those are my year's best estimates, and those are the figures that will go forward to population monitoring. So I'll save those to the database. Up comes the confirmation page. 
again we check that it's what we wanted it to say and we can press save. Finally I'm going to show you mapping the colony and this comes under edit boundary so again we select the colony we press edit boundary and the default map for every heronry is a regular hexagon which is centered on the grid reference that we hold in the database for the site so that might not be very accurate um, very few heronries are hexagonal in shape for a start um, but I can adjust this hexagon to, to, to form any shape that will cover the, the nests that are present at this site. So I'll begin by clicking on the boundary of the hexagon. And that makes it live. And you'll see that we have a, a center point which allows us to move the whole thing around the countryside. And we've got some vertices that we can also pull and push and every side has another point that we can grab and again we can move that and if we move it we create another uh, angle in our polygon and again two more midlines so I'm going to position this over my over my site and push it into shape to show where my nests are and they're just about there. So I'm, I'm happy with that as a, a record of where the nests were in this particular year. I'll press save. And it says, do I want to update the boundary? Yes. So that's all we need to do to enter data for our colony in 2015.